So for this project, I started with a 31 by 23 and a half inch frame that I had picked up at a garage sale. I flipped it over. I took the backing, the tape off the back, the cardboard off the back, removed all the clips, and then removed the glass. Then I flipped it over and I painted the front of the frame blue. Once the paint was dry, I flipped it over and took Elmer's glue and put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replaced the glass and went around one more time with Elmer's glue. This serves two purposes. It helps to hold the glass in place and it helps to prevent any resin leaks. Now I'm also going to be securing this with some painter's tape after the glue has dried. And when you're putting resin on the other side, that will um, adhere it permanently to the uh, frame so you don't have to worry about it. Larger pieces like this, you can also secure it with clear silicone I had caulk. taken a picture of a cute eagle lawn ornament that I really liked, but it was kind of at an angle, so I could only kind of trace one side. So, And I'm not very good at symmetry, so what I did was I went ahead and I folded it in half, and then I cut along the edge so that it would be exactly the same on the other side. Then I taped it to the back of the glass to use as a template and flipped it over. Next, what I'm using is fire glass that's been painted with an iridescent medium. And I'm using this to fill in the eagle's head. Now I'm taking clear Elmer's glue and I'm placing the pieces of glass on top of the clear Elmer's glue just to secure it because I'm going to be moving this um, frame around quite a bit and I don't want anything to jiggle loose. Now when this clear Elmer's glue dries, it dries perfectly clear and you can um, put resin on top of it and you won't even know that it's there. So again, what I'm using for the head is Celestial Fire Glass mixed with Artist Loft Iridescent Medium mixed in a bowl and then spread out on non-stick paper. Now when you spread this out on the paper, you have to make sure that you um, spread it out as far as you can because this is kind of like a paint and it will they will make the pieces stick together. So just spread it out as far as you can and then let it dry out overnight and then you have to kind of crumble it in your hands to break the pieces apart the next day and it turns out so pretty. So I finished filling in the eagle's head, just putting one piece at a time, and laying them flat. And you can see I have saved the pointy ones for around the neck so it looks more like feathers. And you'll see more what I mean once I put the blue on for the chest. The uh, white will be more prominent. So the next thing I have to do is start cutting feathers for the bird's wings. And I'm going to make the wings um, red and blue. And so I want kind of large feathers. The outside is going to be red and the inside blue. So the red, I want larger feathers. And what you do is you just go around the perimeter of the vase. And this is about the size that I want for the red. And as I go down to the bottom of the wings, down toward the tail, I'm going to want the pieces of glass smaller and smaller. So I just, they're probably going to uh, come up random anyway because when you cut glass, it doesn't always break up exactly how you want it to. Sometimes it even crumbles. And sometimes the uh, areas of glass can get thinner on a vase in different areas and you aren't even able to nip it properly with the nippers because these do not come all the way together. So um, <clears throat> so anyway, I just got, I'm just doing this slow so you can see how I'm doing it. And they don't come out perfect. You're probably going to have to go back and um, shape them a little bit. But for the most part, they do come out um, rounded, kind of like a feather. And you just continue to go around the vase till either you get as many pieces as you need or the vase is gone. And for this particular one, I went ahead and I used up the entire vase. So after I was done with the red vase, I continued on with the blue. Now, um, 
this red vase is only painted on both sides, so it cannot be tumbled, whereas this blue vase is that color all the way through it. So you could actually tumble this to get the sharp edges off. So this vase, I go ahead and I do the exact same thing with that I did with the red vase. Only these feathers I want to be a little bit narrower and smaller, shorter I guess you could say, because um, these are going to go towards the inside and you'll see in a minute exactly what I'm doing. So I go around this vase until I have used the entire vase up. So when cutting glass, it's in your best interest to use safety goggles and gloves. I don't wear gloves. It drives me absolutely crazy. I can't, um, I just can't function with them on, but it is in your best interest. Also, when uh, cutting glass, you should do it down in a deep box so that when the shards fly, they fly to the bottom of the box. There's also a certain way to hold the nippers. So if you hold the nippers like that, the glass will fly to the right. If you hold the nippers down like that, the glass will fly down into the box. If you, um, so here's a demonstration. So now it's going to fly sideways toward the side of the box. <clears throat> if you hold it down, it'll fly down. So there's a certain way to hold the nippers to prevent injury. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down the pieces of glass. So the points are very sharp and the edges are very sharp. And I just go over it quickly with my sander just to get the sharp edges off. And also, this is the time when you would reshape them. See how that one piece is just sticking out there? Well, I nip that off and then put it through the sander quick. And um, like I said, this blue glass, you could actually um, throw in the tumbler to get the sharp edges off, or you could use a little sanding block and do the sharp edges. And if you don't want to do the sharp edges, you don't have to. If you're going to hang it in your own house and you know not to um, touch it or just warn people if um, you're selling it. And after they're all sanded down, I take them and wash them with soap and water real good. And then I rinse them off and I set them on a towel to dry. So after I'm done with the blue glass, then I go ahead and I do the same process with the red glass. The only thing is before you wash and dry this glass, you need to test it under water first to make sure the finish isn't going to come off because um, I had a problem with another vase I pulled out of the garage. I was going to use it for something and it had a similar finish to the red and look what happened. I went to wash it in the sink and all of the, <laughs> the spray paint or whatever was in there because that's all that red glass is, is silver spray painted in the inside and red on the outside. So, um, like I said, if you were to put it in a tumbler, the color would come right out of it. But um, you have to just be careful. So next, I took celestial glass. After I was done with all that, I uh, took celestial glass out to the garage, and I painted this blue with the Tamaya translucent blue spray paint. And I gave it several coats, and it turned out to be this beautiful blue color. I wanted to try to match it to the blue glass I'm using for the feathers. Next, I took that pretty blue glass, put clear Elmer's glue all over his, the eagle's chest, and then went ahead and placed the blue glass down. And as you can see, I fit pointy pieces up into the white pointy pieces to make it look like feathers from the eagle's chest. So next, I wanted to put some color on the wings before I put the glass down. I don't know why. I just felt like I needed to do that. And I had tried using painting a little bit of spray paint on, but I decided I didn't like that. So what I did was I took Elmer's glue and put it, um, painted the wings with the Elmer's glue and then took red uh, glitter and sprinkled that on top. And I did the blue different and if I had to do it again I would have done the red this that way also because this kind of turned out a mess I really had to do a lot of cleanup as far as the glitter for the red went
You see I mixed Elmer's glue with the glitter and then just went ahead and painted it on. And this worked so much better. You didn't end up with um, loose glitter, dry glitter all over the place. And I th this really worked out well. And then what I did was I went ahead and just let it dry overnight. And it did take a full uh, 24 hours to dry. And you could see me putting clear Elmer glue over the top of those the glitter because I'm afraid when I pour the resin that the glitter is going to go um, into the resin and spread all over the place. So this is the next day and it was still a little bit wet but this part was totally dry but look how it had come up. So I just put a little bit of Elmer's glue underneath that and pushed it back down. So don't you know panic if it comes up if you choose to do it this way. And up by his uh, should the top of his wings came up a little bit too and I just went ahead and pushed it back down again and then because that part was still wet I had to go ahead and let it dry for another 10 hours or so so the next thing I wanted to make up was some stars and so what I did was I went ahead and mixed up a little bit of resin this resin is the J Diction resin it's a one-to-one -one ratio resin it's a four-hour demold 24-hour cure this is the resin that works great on glass and for molds but do not use it on canvases it leaves fish eyes anyway I mixed the resin up um, slowly three minutes in a cup scraping the sides, scraping the bottoms, and then put it in um, three different separate cups, added white mica powder, blue mica powder, and red mica powder, and um, poured them into each of the molds. I used the little, uh, the little tiny stars for the, uh, used the white mica powder, and the larger stars I did four red and four blue. So while those were curing, I printed out on my um, Cricut, which I just got this past month, and I'm having so much fun with it, Land of the Free because of the Brave. And um, this can also be stenciled on to your uh, project, or you can actually print it out on a piece of paper in the font that you want, tape it to the back of your glass, and then use oil-based markers and copy it onto the glass. So the next day I demolded the stars. This does say four hour demold on the J Diction resin, but it is not ready to demold. After four hours, you really have to wait a good six, seven, maybe even eight hours. Uh, otherwise it's still sticky. And I had made four other white stars before this to go along with so it. So for the beak, I had actually actually found a piece of glass and nipped at it and also used my grinder, stained glass grinder outside, to shape it into a beak. But I decided it was way too thin. So I got a piece of my tumbled glass. Sorry, it's a little off uh, center there. That's it, much thicker. And I decided to use that instead. So I took my little template that I had with my one piece of glass. And of course you can draw it out on a piece of paper and set it on top of your glass. And then go ahead and nip around it as best you can. And that's exactly what I did. <clears throat> was I used the nipping tool and I nipped around it. So um, there's one cut though in it that um, you risk breaking the whole piece in half. So I'm going to take that outside and uh, grind it. So I took a little magic marker and made a line. You can see the part that has to be ground off to make the beak. So I took it outside to my grinder. I apologize for my voice. I uh, have a terrible cold that I'm getting over. And I really had to work on this for about five minutes because it was quite a bit of glass I had to get rid of. But I went ahead and I was able to um, make that groove in there and I went around the entire perimeter of the beak and kind of smoothed it out as best I could. And then when I was done with that, I took it in the house and um, washed it and dried it. And it will look good once I pour the resin on top of it. I have to draw a little uh, nostril on it and part of his mouth. And then he's good to go. So now you're not going to believe what I ended up doing. I just didn't like the red that that was on there and I found this other really bright pretty red and I decided to go ahead and mix that with the clear Elmer's glue and paint that. So you're on. really not going to see a lot of this glitter that's on the eagle but 
there are spaces between the pieces of glass when I put them on and I just want to make sure something pretty and sparkly is underneath it in case you can see anything. And then next I started putting the red glass on and I just started putting the larger pieces at the top one side and then the other side um, one by one getting smaller and smaller as it went to the bottom and I did it this way one side then to the others to make sure everything was uh, nice and symmetrical and even though this looks like it only took a couple of uh, minutes I actually had this um, took me about 20 minutes and I sped the tape up to be less than one minute So next I put the blue glass on just like I had assembled the red glass, the larger pieces toward the top, and it kind of got smaller as it went on. And I did put the little white stars on his chest, and I started putting some of the larger stars around on the glass. So now it's ready for resin, and the resin I'm using for this project is J. Diction Resin. It's a 4-hour demold, 24-hour cure resin, at least that's what it says. I found this resin is really good for molds and for uh, glass on glass, but do not use it on canvas. It leaves fish eyes. It's not good at all on canvas. So, um, and as far as the four hour demold, you need to give it closer to seven to 12 out, seven to eight hours, or it's sticky. And um, 24 hour cure is a little bit questionable. But anyway, you mix equal amounts, one to one ratio in a cup. Scrape the bottom, scrape the side slowly for three minutes. I have this sped way up, so it looks like I'm going really fast, but I'm not. The reason you want to do it slow is because it creates bubbles. Now, in comparing this to the art resin, the art resin also cr creates a lot of bubbles. This a uh, fewer, but the art resin, you can get rid of the bubbles easier than you can with this J. Diction resin. I call them very stubborn bubbles. When I put resin on, I typically put it over the glass first to make sure everything is covered. And then I go up around the edges and into the corners. So um, with this project, I ended up using two 8-ounce cups of resin. So a total of 16 ounces of resin for the entire project and typically with resin you can go on their website and you can um, they usually have a calculator and you put in what size your canvas is and it tells you how much resin to use I typically use more than that and when they do give you that measurement just keep in mind that they do not take into account that you're covering glass also it's typically just um, a canvas like a painted canvas so here I'm just using a little tool to spread all the resin out as best I can. J. Diction resin needs to set for 24 hours to cure at temperatures between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit on a flat level surface. And I did end up, after I had this all spread out, I um, did level it better and I ended up using some popsicle sticks, popsicle sticks not because my floor is on level but it had a couple little um, clips on the back that was making the top of it sit a little higher than the bottom so I had to put a few popsicle sticks down at the bottom here I'm using the kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles and I do come back multiple times to do this it's really important with your projects to get down eye level uh, to see any particles, hairs, um, bubbles that are in it. And I usually come back 10 minutes later and look again because a lot of time if there's a hair in there or a thread, it'll raise to the top as well as the bubbles. And I'll go over it and then I'll come back 10 minutes later again and do the same thing. Look for any uh, sediment, bubbles, and retorch it. So all resins are different. You have to read the directions for the resin that you are using. It's in your best interest to cover it with a dust cover once you're done. I didn't have one large enough, so I had to improvise. Hey everyone, so my eagle's done. <laughs> and the weird thing is, I wasn't even thinking of Memorial Day. When I started this project, all I was thinking of, oh, I have to think of something to do for 4th of July. And then all of a sudden Memorial Day was here and I thought, 
oh crud, this I should have done, you know, and released weeks before. But you know, this would be good to put out for 4th of July, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, any of those, any of those holidays. And um, <laughs> the glitter situation on that, I'm really glad I ended up changing the red glitter. I'm gonna let you guys look and see if you can tell because um, during the resin process, one of the um, red pieces of glass slipped, but I didn't even notice it till it was done. I don't even know if you guys can tell, but because I put that bright red glitter that matches the glass so closely, I couldn't even see it. But anyway, let's see if you guys could see it. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the beak. So um, I don't know if it was confusing for you, but originally I had this um, one beak that was fairly thin, if you look at it that way, and I have tons of this tumbled glass, and which is much thicker. So can you see that? And it, it was kind of off camera when I filmed it. So there's a big difference. Let me hold them side by side. Yeah, there's a big difference in the thickness. And I needed it because the white glass that was by it, I needed it to be higher or else I would have to put one on top of the other. And then the other thing that I didn't talk about was the um, this little piece of glass I put here to create the mouth so, so that it would all look good. So I had to have the beak setting up higher anyway. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the project. Oh, I also wanted to talk about, so I got a Cricut machine, which I just love because I hate stenciling. Now, I have done tons of projects where I've stenciled on glass, and glass is more difficult to stencil on than regular canvas, but it is doable. And I did switch to from acrylic paint, which you can use, and some people are really good at stenciling. But on glass, you have to do multiple layers and let it dry till it's totally dry or you pull up the layer before. So I actually had started using the oil-based um, markers. And I mean, you can even put the image that you're wanting to stencil on the front, the font, the letters, uh, tape it to the back and use your oil-based markers and follow it. And it looks like it was stenciled on but I'm really excited about this Cricut <laughs> that I got. Um, so, and I have another project coming up that I did for a baby shower so, it, with my Cricut, the words. I mean, I think that turned out so pretty. And um, anyway, what else? I guess that was about it. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with the Facebook page. There are so many people on it. And um, so many cool ideas and um, some people, you know, have been doing this longer than I have and some people are beginners and, you know, there's people at all different stages of um, resin and glass art. So I'm learning things, I hope, and um, you guys can too. So um, it is Crazy Glass Lady glass and resin art on Facebook. Go ahead and join us. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. And if you want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.